If you are on the Iron Man journey, one of the most difficult things will be upgrading your gear. When you are entering the PVMing, you might find yourself in a bit of a chicken and egg situation, where you need good gear to PVM, but if you do not PVM, you do not have good gear. Today I want to run through my recommendations for PVM bossing progression path for an Iron Man. These are my personal recommendations and your own path might differ depending on your own preference and your own playstyle. I have made this recommendation list based on what I believe is the most optimal way to get to the best in slot for all styles. This means I'll be talking you through the upgrades and making use of all the styles as we progress, rather than focusing, focusing on one style at a single time. Currently in the endgame, the highest damage style is ranged, followed by melee, then mage. However, for Iron Man, I believe the easiest gear to obtain, especially in the earlier game, is mage, then followed by melee, then ranged. This means that a lot of the min-maxing in terms of the, what gear you get at what time will be very subjective. I will do my best to explain all my reasoning behind the progression decisions so you can make your own choice whether or not to follow my advice. There is enough time in these videos for me to go into more detail about how to specifically kill each boss, how to gear up and what gear to use, and also about the specific drops each boss drop. So if there are any questions related to these, please don't leave them down in the comments below and I will do my best to make up a follow-up video giving, going into more details about each boss. Now our journey starts around the time when you will obtain tier 60 equipment, in other words, graphic staff and lunar equipment. At this point, there isn't anything you can really kill for a direct gear upgrade, but instead there are two bosses you can start killing for other rewards. The first of which is going to be the Dagonoth King Rex. This is where most Iron Man start their PVM journey. Dagonoth King Rex is one of the three Dagonoth Kings, and the Rex can be easily spotted at a very low level. You will not be killing the other Kings, the Supreme and Prime. You will only be killing Rex through safe spotting. You will want to kill this boss early to obtain the Dragon Hatchet, which will speed up your woodcutting training. If you have done branches of Dark Mare at this point, it is also a good idea to start killing Barrows. While you do not need this quest to access Barrows, it is recommended to do this quest first as it gives you access to Draco's Medallion, which allows you to more efficiently do Barrows as it allows you to quickly teleport to Barrows. The gear that Barrows drop is actually fairly poor because they are tank armor rather than power armor. However, they do drop something called the Amulet of the Forsaken, which is used at level 56 Archaeology to unlock Berserker's Fury Relic power, which will greatly increase your damage. The next jump will come when you receive either Vanquish, the tier 70 weapon from May's Quest Caravan after reaching 150 quest points, or the Sun Spear, the tier 70 weapon from the River of Blood. Both of these weapons are all styles and they can switch between any of the three styles in the game. At this point, my recommendation is to jump straight to Vindicta from God Wars Dungeons 2. We are entirely skipping God Wars Dungeons 1 for three reasons. First of all, God Wars Dungeons 1 is just a damage fest. Without high level gear or without a crap gear, you will just get destroyed with no way of mitigating damage. God Wars Dungeons 2 has more mechanics to learn. But also, once you learn them, it will make the fight easier than God of War Dungeons 1. God of War Dungeons 2 also have a different kill count mechanic where you can teleport out and bank, and you can rejoin your instance as long as your instance has not your one hour instance has not expired yet. You do not need to redo your kill count all over again. Whereas for God of War Dungeons 1, if you teleport out, you are out of luck and you're gonna have to redo all your kill count. Finally, Gold War Dungeons 2 has much better gear drops and drop system with the Crest and Dormant armor that mitigates the issue with getting duplicates. For God, God, Dungeons, 1, God Wars Dungeons 1, you can get 2 chests, 3 chests, 4 chests in a row of armor and you, are, you, you just have to keep killing the boss until you get the legs. Whereas for God Wars Dungeons 2, you can attach the Crest to the leg or the armor depending on what armor you're missing. Add Vindicta. The drop you definitely want is the Dragon Rider Lance, as well as the top and bottom of the tier 80 melee armor, Animal Core of Zeros. You can stay here for the helmet, but that is less of a priority because it's less of an upgrade. 
Once you have the Dragon Rider Lance and the T80 melee armor, you can actually start looking at doing a Raxor. A Raxor has an invasion mechanic, so it's worth starting a Raxor early, so you can do a few kills every day without pushing the range up too high, therefore making the boss difficulty too high for your skill for your gear level. Doing Raxor will be a huge skill jump, but also it'll be a huge reward jump as killing Raxor will get you all three styles of the tier 90 weapon. You will want to stay here until you get all three. Getting the scythe first will be the best to speed up your kills. Otherwise, if you get the Nox bow first, you can consider going back to God of War Dungeon 2 to kill Twin Furies for the range armor so you can kill so you can do some range kills air Raxor. It is definitely not recommended to mage a Raxor. Once you have finished with a Raxor, the entire PVM world kind of really opens up for you. At this point, a lot of the path will be more subjective depending on whether you can find teams or if you prefer solo PVMing. The first three things you might want to consider doing is first of all, doing the 5 cave and 5 clean to get the best in slot cape for, both, for all three stars. Second of all, if you have the team, go start doing Rise of the, Rise of the Six Barrows. This will give you a quick access to tier 90 melee power armor if you don't, if you can't, or if you are still on your way to making masterwork. It will also allow you to get the tier 90 shield, to, and that will make it easier for you to do roles in group PVMing. The last thing you want to start doing is Beastmasters. This unlocks the Corruption Codex, which is huge for both range and mage. Beastmaster is a 10-man raid, so you can actually start this uh, at a much lower level with either a Sun Spear or even a Gothic Staff. However, most teams will not accept you unless you have tier 90 gear, which is why I have put Beastmasters here rather than recommend you to do Beastmasters when you have the Gothic Staff. But of course, if you have a friendly clan or friends who are willing to take you with lower gear, by all means, you should start earlier. The earlier you get a Codex, the stronger you are for the other two styles. Now, once you have got to this point, the next part really delves into the really, really high-end PVME. Most of these upgrades give small incremental boost to your damage. So if you're just looking for good gear for Slayer, etc., you can stop here and maybe look out to do some Slayer PVME, in which case you'll be doing stuff like Extensions or you'll be doing Magister. Now, if you are interested to keep upgrading your gear and getting high-level PVME, I will do the next part in the second part of this video, so I'll see you in part 2.